go to school, go to school. We don't care how much it costs. You can just take out the loans and you can pay the loans throughout your life, but just go to college because college is your way to success because we don't have tons of money to give you in our inheritance. So we want you to go to college and you're gonna be successful if you go to college. If you get good grades, you're gonna get a good job. You're gonna be very successful. You're gonna have a nice house. You're gonna have a nice car. You're gonna have a really good life and you can, you can have a really good life. And if you don't go to college, you know what's gonna happen if you don't go to college? You'll be nothing. You'll be absolutely nothing. Yep. You'll be homeless. Yeah, I'll give you two years. If you don't go to college, I'll give you two years. You're going to be homeless. You're going to be sleeping under a bridge if you don't go to college. Why I didn't finish college and why a degree can hold some people back. What up, YouTube? It's your boy, Jermaine, back with another video. And in this video, this is going to be a story time video. This video, I'm going to talk about why I didn't finish college and why I believe a college degree can hold back a lot of people. And I bet you guys are wondering, how can a degree hold someone back? And I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about this because maybe you don't know how a college degree can hold certain people back. But yet, it can also do a lot of good, too. It can get you a job. It can get you in places that, without a degree, you can't have. So I'm just going to talk about my experience and... Let's just get this video started. But anyway, let, let me give you guys a recap of my like college career. So I went to a community college in Santa Barbara. I was at that community college for about two years. The first two years, I wasn't really cramming out that many classes. I was taking maybe two classes a semester. And in the second year, I was going full time. And towards the fourth um, semester, of the second year, my fourth semester at this community college. I was kind of feeling like this was something I didn't want to do anymore. You know, after two years, after, you know, one full year of just working really, really hard, I was just kind of questioning myself and I was just trying to figure out, is, is this what I really want to do? And why, why do I want this? Why do I want to be in school? Why do I want a degree? And then I started to answer that question. And when I answered that question, I said, I want a degree, so you know, I, I can, so I can say I have a degree, so I, I can get a job, so I can get, I can be, be looked at differently in society. Now, I'm educated, and that's why, that was basically the main reason why I wanted a degree. It wasn't like I really wanted to work at a job. You know, I was studying finance, by the way, if you guys want to know what I was studying. And that was really going to set me up to, like, work at a bank. And you guys know me, like, I don't like to dress up, like dress shoes and a suit and tie. No, I'm definitely not interested in that. However, society likes that a lot. Like, society likes that man. They like that guy in the suit and tie, especially a black man in a suit and tie. You know, that's definitely looked at very good, you know. Oh, black man in a suit and tie. Oh, he must be doing very well for himself. Then I figured out that was the main reason why I was in school. It was because of what I thought society would think of me just because I had a degree. Like, I was studying finance for what at the end of the day? For what? At the end of the day, I'm asking myself, why am I studying this? Like, for what? Like, for what? Like, you, you really don't want to work at a bank. And what else are you going to do? Like, what else are you going to do? You're going to get a degree and you're going to owe money because my parents told me, they're like, look, we're not paying for you to go to school. Like, no way. Like, you're smart enough to figure it out on your own. If you were a kid that grew up in the suburbs, if you were a kid that, you know, you, you never had a job and, you know, we just like spoon fed you your whole life. Yeah, maybe I would recommend you go to college, but we feel that you can do very well without going to college. And most parents don't tell that to their kids. Most parents say, go to school, go to school. We don't care how much it costs. You can just take out the loans and you can pay the loans throughout your life, but just go to college because college is your way to success because we don't have tons of money to give you in our inheritance. So we want you to go to college and you're going to be successful if you go to college. If you get good grades, you're going to get a good job. You're going to be very successful. You're going to have a nice house. You're going to have a nice car. You're going to have a really good life. And you can, you can have a really good life. And if you don't go to college, you know what's going to happen if you don't go to college? You'll be nothing. You'll be absolutely nothing. Yep. You'll be homeless. 
yeah, I give you two years. If you don't go to college, I give you two years. You're gonna be homeless. You're gonna be sleeping under a bridge if you don't go to college. You have to go to college. If you don't go to college, there's no way you're gonna get a job. You will not get hired if you do not go to college. You have to go to college. I'm telling you, if you don't go to college, your life will be ruined. Yep, you have to. What else are you gonna do? There's no more jobs. And you know, a lot of young people, <laughs> this is what a lot of young people hear, like growing up, like they, they have this fear on them. So a lot of young people go to college and I'm sitting there thinking, do I want to leave? Like, how do I leave? Like, I've, I've invested all this time. Like, how do I just walk away? Like, how do I leave? And then once I was at a class, uh, maybe I should talk about the cost of college too. Because at this point of time, my first um, semester, my first two semesters, I had to pay for college because I had a job um, and I had a job the year before and whenever you qualify for like financial aid and stuff, hey, look at the previous year and the previous year I had a job and I was making more so I had to pay for school. But at the same time, I still got like financial aid money, which was like a couple hundred dollars because I was only taking like a few classes. So school was like super cheap. I believe it was like $21 per credit hour. Super, super cheap. And I also qualified for in-state tuition because I had been living in California for about two years at that time. So now I'm thinking a year from now, I'm gonna have to go to a university. And I'm looking at the cost of universities and I'm thinking, yo, like I say, I don't exactly know what I wanna do. Like I know for sure I don't wanna work for a company. Like I don't want a job and <laughs> Like next year, I'm gonna have to pick a school to go to, and that school is gonna cost a whole lot more money than going to a community college. I'm just trying to figure this out. Now, meanwhile, during my college career, especially the second year, the second year I was self employed, so I was selling a lot of random stuff at the swap meet. So, what random stuff I was selling at the swap meet? You guys may have um, remembered me talking about swap meets in my last story time video. Maybe I'll stick it up here if I remember, but click it up above there. So you guys may remember in my last story time video, I was talking about like I was selling stuff at the swap meet. So what were the items I was selling at the swap meet? I was selling like all sorts of random like glass pipes for people who like smoke pie and all sorts of like random lighters and like cell phone accessories like like cases and um, chargers and headphones and like I would sell a bunch of random stuff and then I would even flip cell phones like I would buy cell phones from this guy at the swap meet and then I'd turn around and sell it on Craigslist and then I would buy this at the swap meet and turn around and put this on Craigslist and I would go to a yard sale and buy this and then put this on Craigslist so I would always be selling stuff and I had a math teacher and math was like the only class that I really really liked like English I hated English yo so during my whole career at school, I would sell random stuff at school. So I would walk up with a backpack and I would just have the backpack full of stuff. And in math classes, because I like I really like math, it's like the only subject I really paid attention to. Math class was always, the, the math teachers were always cool about you selling stuff because math teachers understand numbers, they understand money, they, they know what you're doing, you know? So I had this math teacher, dude, coolest guy in the world. I'm not going to say his name, but he, he was a New Yorker, by the way. And he noticed what I was doing. Like He noticed what I was doing. He noticed I would come to class like 10, 15 minutes early. I would sit in the back of the room. People would walk up. People would buy stuff. People would walk away. Like I would, I would just be slinging stuff all the time. And I remember one day I made like, I think it was like $400 in one day, like in that one class, yo. Now it all wasn't profit because it was like I made $400 in cash, but I had to pay for this stuff. But a lot of the stuff was like a f one to four markup. So, you know, I, maybe I made like $300 in that class that day. And and this teacher knew what I was doing. And this teacher knew that like, like I, I was different, you know, like a lot of the kids at, you know, Santa Barbara City College were either international kids, like from, you know, Korea or, you know, um, the Philippines or China, not the Philippines, well, maybe the Philippines or, I'm not picking on the Philippines, um, or Europe, like Sweden, like Sweden, Norway, you know, certain countries like that. And then you'd have a lot of California kids. 
and you can just tell the difference like you know me like I'm from like I was from the south and I'm like just just different you know like I'm all swagging and making money and like nobody else you never see anybody else slinging anything on campus you know like I never ever saw anyone hustling anything and so I met this one like Indian chick and she she made my hustle look bad you know <laughs> like she was hustling so hard, she had tables set up and stuff, like, like literally, she would, like, you know, pay the school, like, there, there was, like, a program you could go through where you, you pay the school and you can, like, set up a table and you can make money. I mean, she was hustling, like, big time, and we definitely became friends. The breaking point of me leaving college was here. I remember going to that math class one day, and I went in, like, a normal day, you know, went, went to the back, I'm making money. No big deal, good day. And um, someone in the class took another English class with me, like the same English class that I had a problem with the teacher. She was just giving me like a hard time. Like, I mean, it was, it was like rough. Like I just ended up leaving. And they asked, hey, um, did you ever finish such and such class? And they asked, what did you get? And I said, oh, I got an incomplete. And an incomplete is better than like, you know, an F or, <laughs> or a D or something. And the teacher over overheard it, and he, he, you know, he asked, you know, he asked me about it because I was doing really good in his class. And he was like, "So, what are you here for?" And I was like, "Well, I want to get a degree in finance, you know." But he, he didn't just come off and say, "What are you here for?" We were talking about some other things, like we were talking about something in the class, and then we were talking about. He was like, well, "What are you selling today?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm just selling this and that and that." And then he just popped the question, like, "So, what are you here for?" And uh, I said, oh, I'm here like studying a finance degree. He's like, man, you're getting a finance degree for what? Like to get a job? And I was like, well, I, you know, honestly, I really don't want a job. I really don't see myself working in like the corporate world or especially I don't see myself working in the finance world. And then he asked me like, well, what you, well, you gotta figure that out. What are you here for, man? Cause look like you got it. You got a lot of charisma. You got you got awesome sales skills. You're doing great, man. But yeah, just just figure it out. Well, what are you here for? And I remember leaving the class. And before the conversation with this teacher, I was already thinking about it. I was already thinking, what am I gonna do? Like next next year, am I gonna go to? You know, university, that's going to cost a lot of money. I'm going to get into a lot of debt. I'm trying to figure out all of this. And you know what? I just didn't go back. Just didn't go back, yo. Walked away and didn't go back. So I was done with school. So around that time, it was like, it was kind of tough because it was something that I wanted to do anyway. And then once I like said, no, I'm done, I'm not gonna go back, I felt so great. <laughs> I felt so great because I was terrified of taking those freaking English classes. I'm like, look, man, I don't care what anyone say about me. Like, call me whatever, call me like, I don't care what people say. Like, I'm not going back to those freaking English classes. They suck, like my English is good enough. Like, why do I need to write like all this crap when majority of the time like I don't write anything because I just talk to Siri nowadays because we have time technology that you can just talk to your phone and the words will pop up on your phone. You can talk to your computer the words pop up on your computer. And you know what? Like certain things other people can just write better than me. Like certain things other people can just just do better. I'm, and I'm that type of person, look, like let's just hire you to do this. And I also had another English teacher, yo. This was an English teacher that that was just just incredible. She was awesome. And you know what she told me? She told me, Jermaine, you're just gonna have to hire a secretary. That's what she told me. You're just gonna have to hire a secretary. And to this day, I have yet. I have, to this day, I have not hired a secretary. And what she was trying to say is, she was trying to say, y your situation is probably not going to change. <laughs> but you have this attitude and you have this charisma and you have ideas that can go somewhere. And don't let your English, don't let you being a horrible writer stop you at all. Don't let that stop you. Don't let that stop you. You hire a secretary. <laughs> you know, and that was the words of wisdom that she had for me. And, you know, she didn't say, you know, why are you here? But she was basically saying that, like, keep trying. <laughs> because 
you're gonna do great. Like she, she was just awesome, like inspirational. So how can a college degree hold someone back? Okay, you're the type of person, you get a degree. Okay, you're looking for a job and you can't find the exact job for your degree. So what do you do? You don't accept any jobs below your degree. That could actually hurt you. That could actually hurt you because now you, you know, you're looking at yourself is here, but sometimes before you can get here, you're actually here and you need to start here instead of starting here. You know, you have a lot of people, they walk out of school with this degree and they think that, okay, I have this degree. I'm better than all of these other people out here because I went to college and I have a degree. But actually, you're not better than all these other people out here because the only thing that you've did for the past four years was just read books and study. Other people out here have had jobs, they've paid taxes, you know, they've invested in their 401k, they probably don't have student loans because they've been working or their parents did not have to pay for college because they've been working. So for someone to say, you know, look, I have this degree and, you know, I should have this job and I should have this car and, you know, you shouldn't, uh, you didn't go to college? So, so how do you have, why do you live in this neighborhood? Because I, I, I don't have student loans and I've worked and I've saved and all this time you spent partying in college was time that I spent saving money. Don't get me wrong, after 10 or 20 years, you'll probably make a lot more money with your degree because you would have paid back your student loans and all that versus this other person over here. But who's to say this other person over here didn't buy a house when they were 20 years old when you were still partying in college? You know, so a degree, I'm not necessarily saying a degree can hold back a lot of people, but a degree can kind of set you up for different playing grounds. You know, if you are poor and you are walking out of college, instead of having the freedom to relax and take your time and look for a job, maybe you're forced to pick, take the first job you can find, you know? Like, to this day, right now, I know friends of mine who have went to college and they have jobs and they're paying back crazy amounts of student loans. And look at me, I was in college and I was thinking, do I want to do this? Do I want to take this route? Do I want to take this road in life? Do I want to be an indentured servant to the banks? Because that's basically what you are when you owe student loans to the banks. Like, like honestly, you, like I, I'm just gonna go ahead and say this. This may be a little harsh, but this is the real reason how I look at it. I look at it as if I look at slavery, okay? And I, hopefully I don't offend anyone here. But back in the day with slavery, you had the slave owners that lived in this big, pretty house, right? right? And then you had the, the people that worked in the fields, they lived, you know, in the back, like in these little, you know, boxes. And a whole bunch of people lived in one room, right? And it was just it completely different. Like, you know, the workers live here, the rich people live here. And it's kind of like that today. It's like the same exact way if you look at student loans and if you look at people with student loans you have you know all these young people living in these little college boxes right and then you have these big banks downtown in these big beautiful buildings you know marble floors and you know super fast elevators state-of-the-art I mean think about it banks have the nicest buildings banks have the nicest buildings what other institution has a nicer building not libraries definitely not government buildings go to your DMV, like the building looks like crap because it's a government building. Banks are like the nicest. They are the most fancy. You're not like better than me just because like you, you finish college. Like you still gotta pay your bills just like I gotta pay my bills. And chances are if you went to school and your parents didn't pay for it, you could actually be worse off. And that's the other part of this video I want to talk about, how a degree can hold you back. Like, if you get a degree and you're, and you're thinking, okay, I'm better than this, or I can't do this, or this job is not good enough for me, that can actually hold you back. Because maybe if you took that low paying job, or maybe if you took that job that you thought that maybe you were you know, too good to have, you could possibly move up in that position much faster. Like, I've seen a lot of people that, that have done this. Like, they, you know, walked out of college and they had this degree, and they're thinking, well, crap, I can't get this job right now, but what I can do is take this other job, and now I got my foot in this door at this company, and I have this job, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm making less than what I should be making, but they've got their foot in the door. In a year, 
or two goes by, now they actually got that job that they went to college for. You know, but I know so many people, nope, I'm not doing a thing. I will go back home and live with my parents. I got a degree and, you know, I'm only going to hang out with people with degrees. Now let's talk about the cost of college. College is not cheap. Usually, a lot of people take out student loans to go to college if your parents cannot afford to pay for you to go to college. If your parents can afford to pay for you to go to college, you are in the green because your college is already paid for. If you go to college and study basket weaving, if you go to college and study engineering, whatever, your college is paid for. If you are taking out loans to go to college and you get a degree in engineering, it's probably going to be a little bit easier for you to find a higher paying job, something to pay those loans back versus if you go to the same college and you study in something like history or you study something like English, okay? It's going to be a lot harder to pay back the, those loans going to the same school that someone else went to you know, with an en engineering degree or maybe some degree in like software development or some degree in robotics or, or pretty much a degree in like the sciences or like a law or, you know, or a degree like that where you can make way more money over the course of your lifetime because some degrees you just really can't make as much money off of versus other degrees. So now let's go back to the cost. You can't afford to pay for college, you have to take out loans. However, there are scholarships and there are grants and things like that, but a lot of times you still have to take out loans. So what happens? As soon as you finish school and you're, a and you're able to get a job, you, you find a job, let's say you, it takes a six months or maybe it takes a month or maybe, okay, you just find a job, right? No, you have to pay back the student loans. Now, how long is that going to take? How long is it going to take to pay back the student loans? You're already starting off in the red. But guys, you want to hear the craziest part of the whole story, the craziest part of this whole video? About a year ago, about a year and a half ago, like I was on the phone with a homie, and I was just, you know, telling him what I'm doing with like this YouTube and like how I'm making money and just basically like, you can do this too. This friend had just graduated college and he was looking for a job and he was looking for, you know, come on, you just got out of college, are you looking for a job so you can tell all your friends, oh, I got hired here. And I was telling my friend, like, look, dude, like, I, six months ago, like, I was making this amount of money on YouTube and I'm doing this. And you know what my friend told me? He said, man, I could, I could actually drive for Uber. Like, I wouldn't mind doing... Yeah, I wouldn't mind driving for Uber, but I would never want my friends to know that, you know, I drive for Uber. I'm looking for something far more professional. It's just something that, you know, making YouTube videos and, you know, that's just something that, I, that's just something that I couldn't see myself ever doing. You know, I, I couldn't do that. Like, I went to college and, you know, for four years, like, I, I studied and to make videos online and make money for that, I'm definitely not interested. You know, and it's crazy because I still talk to this friend today and his story is pretty much the same as it was a year and a half ago. He hasn't exactly found that dream job that he's looking for. And you know, he works here and he works there and he doesn't exactly has that professional job he was looking for. He just does a lot of contract work because he doesn't want to, you know, work a job that's below what he went to school for. So now he's just working contract work and he sort of likes the contract work, but the contract work comes and goes and he really would like something far more stable. And he talks about creating passive income and I've told him, I said, man, I'd tell you all sorts of ways to create passive income online. Yeah, but, you know, I don't really want to do any of that, you know, the passive income stuff that you talk about. And I don't just talk about making YouTube videos. I was talking about, you know, making stock photography account because this guy is actually into photography. Now, he didn't go to school to be a photographer, but he definitely knows how to use a camera a whole lot better than me. I say all this to say some people, when they get a degree, they feel they can't do anything below that because if they do anything below that, people around them, the people that they went to college with, the people that they associate with, will look down on them and look at them as if, you're not a part of us anymore. And at the end of the day, you're not even hanging out with your college friends anymore. At the end of the day, your college friends are gone, long gone. Chances are maybe their parents like are taking care of them and like maybe they got a job or something or maybe they're just going on with their life. But you, you're out of college, you're all by yourself, you're all alone and it's all up to you to survive. And just because of what your friends think 
you won't take advantage of opportunities or you won't take advantage of you know things that could actually benefit you but you just don't see you're not looking at it the same way because you're you're up here and you see yourself up here and really are you really up here or are you really down here I mean that's the question you're gonna have to answer so guys I don't know this is a pretty long video if you watch to the very very end of this video let me know like like put it in the comments below say I watched to the end at the end of the day my thousand dollars is worth the same amount is this educated person's thousand dollars over here and money don't see no degree yo <laughs> you just gotta go out there and make you gotta go out there and get money and just because you got a degree don't mean you just gonna get some job pop up in front of you you know <laughs> so anyway guys end of this video thanks a lot for watching like comment subscribe if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button watch some video do something like that peace out yo